Welcome to WRC 23, the World Radio Communication Conference being held in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. And we're here in the very last week, in fact, the uh, second to last day. And I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mindel de la Torre, who is the Chief Regulatory and International Strategy Officer for OmniSpace. Mindel, welcome to the studio. Well, thank you. Glad to be here. Now, as looking back on the, the history of our interviews, in fact, the last one we did was 2019 at WRC, the World Radio Communication Conference as well, in Chamoche. That, we that have time. to stop meeting like this. I know, exactly. <laughs> well, it's been four years in between the two. Right. Um, and I just really wanted to ask you if things have changed. Um, and I know that last time we were talking very much about things like the satellite that you were looking after was the, the, the size of a school bus. Uh, and I know that uh, things have, have certainly uh, decreased in size and there's a right. lot more things that are going on up there. So what's, what's it like at the moment? Well, I mean, since four years ago, since 2019, boy, really things really have changed. I mean, now everybody's talking about NGSO, non-geostationary satellites, which is what we are. And so at that point, you know, the SpaceX hadn't gotten off the ground yet. Kuiper hadn't gone off, you know, off the ground yet. So it was very incipient. And so now here we are and we're very excited about being part of it. And we're different than they are because we're actually a mobile satellite service. And so they tend to be the fixed service, uh, fixed satellite service. And we're mobility and connectivity everywhere is what we are. And that's some of the big issues that we're here at this conference. So we're very, inter very interested in the result here. So that's what I was going to ask you as well. I mean, obviously, this, this, this conference is all about spectrum. I know that last time you were looking at a particular band of spectrum that you were particularly keen on making sure that there was room for you in there. What are your priorities this time? Well, our, our main priority was to get an agenda item for 2027. Um, on the S band to expand it because, as we've said, you know, now it used to be that you would provide mobile satellite service. Now we're looking at non-terrestrial networks, 3GPP kinds of things where it's in your in your handset. That's such a difference, you know, from before. And so having that ubiquity means that we need more spectrum. And there's all these different players that are very interested in it. And so that was what we were here to do, and we were able to do it. So we're very happy about that. We were also talking about the Internet of Things last time, and that yes. was pretty much IoT. People hadn't really heard about it too much at, the, at that stage. What's the landscape like now in terms of IoT, Internet of Things, and, and in terms of uh, connectivity, and in terms of, of course, satellites as well? Yes. Well, we actually have a live demo. If you want to come out and see the live demo, for um, which is the mobile satellite service using IoT um, you know, terminals. So we have anything from a tracker on an elephant that's about this big and that, you know, has this huge collar that goes around the elephant to doing door openers or doing temperature, doing, you know, the, it, actually your imagination is where the, all of the sensors can go. Our satellite is the connectivity. So we have, and then we have the, sat, the uh, connectivity on the ground here. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, really developed and you have all these different sort of market marketing and markets for IOT and so we are seeing that you know as as one of the areas I mean I think it's a little hard to make your whole business case on that so we're looking at more the direct to device for our future system and we've launched two satellites um, so that was good last year to be the the first part of the of the next generation system so we hope to have that up and running um, very soon doing direct to device now we've had a lot of guests in here talking about space sustainability I wanted to ask you what is your perspective of that yeah I think that the, obviously it's important and it's in every company's interest that there is a sustainable you know way of, of keeping space free of collisions and anything else so you know, we don't want our, our satellites to be colliding with anybody else, and nobody else wants that either, right? And so there is, I think, sometimes I think that, that, that there's no real view of how the industry is, is interested. I think they, they might think that industry is interested in not doing anything on it. I mean, you know, I, I'm probably one of the outliers, but I actually see that there's a role for the ITU here. The ITU has expertise. You know, other agencies, UN agencies like UNUSA don't really have that, that expertise. But here you have a great amount of, of, of expertise. And so it could be a new area for, for the ITU um, that I think would be good for all of mankind and womankind. Talking about womankind, I was just about to get onto that because, of course, the network of women has been uh, very active since yeah. we've uh, uh, spoken a number of times. 
you're wearing a, a wristband that's got the uh, the network of yeah, women now exactly. for, for WRC23. I know that there were a couple of events here as well, but I wanted to ask you, in terms of the, the, the percentages, in terms of the numbers of women attending this event now and other ITU events, uh, are you pleased with the progress on that? Oh, I really am. I, you know, you can look at who's leading the, who's on the microphone, who is sitting up on the dais. It's really, it's it's changed so much. And I do think that it is one of those we, we, one of the issues that we had was that there were never any women that were in the queue to be um, a chair. And so I think that's one of the things that the network of women sort of tried to change was to get in early. So, you know, the, the head of the CPM was a woman this year, um, you know, with Cindy Cook. And then, you know, going forward, we've had a lot of young women coming in and taking, um, you know, position like Luciana from, uh, well, there's two Lucianas from Brazil, actually, that, that are chairs. And it's really nice to see that. And I think that that, that and some, you know, African women now, uh, you know, heading up the credentials committee and, you know, areas that they really didn't, they hadn't, they didn't have, they didn't have experience before, but they just jumped in and did a great job. So we're, I'm super happy about it. We need more women um, in those positions, but it's, I think it's a good start. You mentioned uh, WRC 2027 because, of course, this whole thing is just one long process, really. We, we were talking as well last time about trying to, 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 to at least shorten the length of the, the actual meetings and seeing if we could streamline it or look at different strands and that kind yes. of thing. Has there been any, any progress on that? Have you heard anything none, about that at all? None at all. <laughs> none at all. In fact, I think that, that it's worse than before because every band is encumbered. And so no matter what you do, there's going to be, you know, interested parties. But, but I do think that the four weeks, it, it, it's, it's very difficult for people to leave their day job because I think most of us, this is not the only part of our job, right? And so to leave your day job, to come here, um, it, it's very tough. And um, it would be really nice to have it be shortened. And I think that the real work gets done in the third week, and then in the fourth week is where sort of the compromises come together. So maybe just have it two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I don't think that had ever happened. But. <laughs> you're, you're president, or you never know. You never know. Uh, and, and what are some of the outcomes that you hope will come from this uh, this World Radio Communication Conference? Well, one we already know, which is really good. That is the MSS, the two gigahertz MSS. So there's quite a few mobile satellite service, um, you know, agenda items for the future conference. So for 2027. Um, that have gone through and I think they went through sort of as a package and there's one for low data rate as well and then there's another one which is the looking at using MSS mobile satellite service in the terrestrial bands and that seems there seems to be a lot of interest in that that is something that for our company we actually operate in the mobile satellite service so we're not that's not really something that we're really uh, worried about but um, we'll be interested to find out what happens on that I think it's going to be a tough a tough tough you know four years for that area for that area and for Omnispace how do you see the future for Omnispace well I think it's really great and you know just the fact that Global Star with Apple started to put what we've been talking about for a long time to putting the MSS the mobile satellite service in a device they're using it for emergency services now but it basically give lends credibility to the business plan that we have and so you know it that we, we were applauding that, and that's what we're, we're going to be, you know, a standardized system going forward, having, you know, it, ubiquitous. You won't know that you're actually using us, which is fine with us. We're happy to be the one behind the scenes. That's brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Miguel. It's been great catching up with great you. Great to catch up Let's with hope, you, too. It's a, hope it's not another four years before we, we talk again. Yes. Um, but we wish you all the very best, of course, with uh, with everything that you're you're pushing for and, and for Omnispace. And, and as I say, hopefully we'll catch up again very yeah, soon. I hope so, too. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank you. Bye. And if you've enjoyed this interview, then why not check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on our podcast channels, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And for further information, why not visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.